the 2018 past paper. Okay, multiple choice in the 2018 past paper. Okay, which of the following is not a form of electromagnetic radiation? This is a bit of a gift, okay? It is beta, because that's a form of nuclear radiation um, and particles at that. So you should, you, just, you should know the rest. I'm not even going to go through the electromagnetic spectrum. You need to go back and look. Okay, diagram represents the periodic table. Shaded block is the... Okay, a bit of a gift. This is the F block. Okay, so your S is over here. With this is an S at the side as well. Uh, here's your P block. Here's your D block. There's the F. Okay, a representation of a D orbital. The maximum number of electrons that can occupy this orbital is, well, again, this is a straight KU point on this one. Any orbital can only hold a maximum of two electrons. It doesn't matter what the fancy shape is they show. All that's showing is where the electrons are spending 99.9% .9 of their time. It's just that, that outline that they're giving you. But two, that's it. Um, okay, question four. Uh, for the reaction, and we've got a three-dimensional arrangement of bonds around the boron atom, changes from what to what. So we've got BF3. So BF3 is boron, which has three outer electrons, and fluorine, which is bringing one valency electron to the party for each one. So that gives me basically three bonded pairs. That is trigonal planar. Okay. So get rid of A and B here, because I'm just looking at these two now. Okay, and then I bring in F minus. Um, so I'm bringing in a fourth one of these. So that brings in another another one here. So we're going, so that is boron at three, fluorine now at four. Plus, being clear, we have a negative here. So I add in another electron as well. So that gives me four bonding pairs, because I have eight in total, so it gives me four bonding pairs, and that's tetrahedral. Okay. Right, which of the following correctly shows the arrangement of the 3D electrons in the nickel 2 plus ion in, um, that's hexa aqua nickel 2. Okay. Right, so first of all, let's be clear on what we're looking at for the nickel 2 plus, the 3D electrons. Okay, so I'm going to here to find my nickel. If it's gone nickel 2 plus, I've basically cut out my 4s electrons. So I've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. I have 8 in the 3d. Okay, so let's get rid of A, because that's the wrong number, and let's get rid of D. That was assuming that you didn't cut out the 4s, that you left the 4s2 in. Okay. Um, Right, so we've now got B and C. This is the trick. Okay, what we've got here is a ligand binding to the nickel. So what you now have is crystal field splitting. You've got your d orbitals becoming split into two different levels and becoming non-degenerate. And so B, it's a tricky one. Watch out. Okay, question six, a little bit more straightforward than this one. Manganese has an oxidation number of plus five in which of the following? Okay, um, you just got to run them. So if we've got MnO4 minus, um, so we're basically saying that's minus one. So the Mn plus four times oxygen, oxygen is two minus, so that is uh, plus minus eight equals minus one. Sorry, I'll get rid of that minus, so that's clear. Um, which means that Mn must be plus seven. Okay, and any. And then you just run the rest of them. So in B, it's the same thing. So it's MnO4 minus, or O4, sorry, is 2 minus this time. So that's Mn minus 8 equals minus 2. So Mn must equal plus 6. So it's not B. In C, you can see where this is going actually, hopefully. That's minus 3 this time. So Mn minus 8 um, is minus 3. So Mn must be plus 5 for all that to cut, figure out. And so C is the correct answer. And just to be absolutely clear, MnO2 is 0, means that you've got Mn minus 4 is 0. So Mn equals plus 4. So it's definitely not D. Okay, that's it. Okay, question 7. 
When sulfur dioxide and oxygen react, the following equilibrium is established. Which line in the table is correct if the temperature in the equilibrium mixture is increased? Okay, the forward reaction here is negative. So the forward is exothermic. If I increase the temperature, I do not favour the forward. I'm going to favour the back. So what's going to happen is that my SO2 is going to decrease. Now what that means in terms of the equilibrium constant, remember equilibrium constant is your products over your reactants. And what I'm doing is increasing this number and decreasing this number, but most importantly I'm increasing the bottom half of my fraction, so basically I'm making my equilibrium constant smaller. Okay, um, so E. Okay, question eight. This one's a little bit, you've got to be careful on this one because they're not actually using the pairs. Okay, which line in the table correctly describes H2CO3 and HCN in the above reaction? We're looking for bases and conjugates, um, and, or acids and conjugates. Okay, so this one here, what has happened to this one is it has changed to this one over here. So we have gone from H2CO3 to HCO3 minus. So what it has done is donate a proton. So it has acted absolutely as an acid because it has donated a proton. Okay, but that is not the second thing you're looking for. The second one is actually the second pair. We're looking now at the hydrogen cyanide, okay, and what's happened to it, we have to look at what happened here. It actually gained a proton. So this was the base which means that this one is now a conjugate acid because that is now capable of losing a proton. Okay, so tricky. Be careful because it was, as I say, two different pairs you were looking at. So, D. Okay, question nine. What is the concentration of hydroxide ions in moles per litre in a solution with a pH of 8.5? Actually, not, not too tricky as long as you just don't panic and read the question carefully we're looking for hydroxide ions. So go to your data book and you're given this. So that's making th things a little bit easier because then you know that this is 8.5 plus your POH equals 14 so therefore we can say that POH is 5.5. Okay that's your first step not done. Okay, so now I've got my POH again in the data book. You don't even have to, to work that hard for this one. It says that POH is equal to the negative log of the hydroxide ion concentration. So exactly the same thing if you're looking for pH. So you're just doing the inverse log. Um, so you're taking this to the power, um, but adding in 5.5. And that gives you 3.16 times 10 to the minus 6. So... OK, um, your calculator might be different in how you're doing it. Mine was second function on the log, um, which gave me something that looked like that. And then plug in minus 5.5 there to give me my my answer. Make sure you're happy with how you get that on your calculator. OK, question 10. Butanoic acid is a weak acid which dissociates as shown. The equilibrium position can be shifted to the right by the addition of. Okay, so I want to favour the forward. Right, a catalyst. No, this has got nothing to do with equilibrium position and you should know that from higher. Okay, sulfuric acid. Well, if I add in sulfuric acid, what I'm really adding in is I'm adding in more of this because um, I'm adding in more hydrogen ions. And so if I'm doing that, um, I'm going to favour the back. So that's no good it will try and get rid of it. Sodium hydroxide, on the other hand, that will react with this, with the OH- to go to water, so it will neutralise off some of the hydronium. And if it does that, that will favour the forward. So this will work. And um, just to be clear, sodium benzoate, sorry, benzoate, butanoate, is adding in this. So again, this is the same problem as the sulfuric. It's increasing on the right-hand side, pushing it back. So C. Um, first section.